This video is brought to you by JLC PCB. JLC PCB manufactures high quality PCBs at a very low cost. Simply upload your Gerber files and choose your color today for only $2. I just bought a second microscope and unlike my first one it didn't come with the ring light. For some reason good or even decent ring lights are pretty pricey. I paid $200 for the scope and I will not pay $20 for a light so let's see if I can design my own. So this is the schematic from my LED ring light from my microscope. It's pretty simple. A lot of it's unnecessary in a sense. Uh, so it consists of 48 surface mount LEDs, which are in groups of 12. Um, right here we have them uh, just running in series, four in series in parallel with two more. So three, three sets of four in parallel ran in series, if that makes any sense. They're tied high to 12 volts. I should use a resistor in between the positive side of them, but I didn't because 12 volts. So like, we'll see what happens and go from there. Uh, over here we have our control circuitry, which is consists of a 4017 decade counter, two dual package NPN transistors to control the groups of LEDs, four diodes up here, I'll explain those in a second, and our power supply for the 4017 decade counter. The LEDs take 12 volts, but the 4017 decade counter works at a lower voltage, so I just threw in a 7805 voltage regulator to give it a power supply. Right here we have our clock input, which will be using to shift the outputs of the 4017 decade counter. Uh, we'll ju we're just going to tie in a little tactile switch to this and just push it manually. Um, so I'll explain how it works real quick. I kind of want to go after the same method or functionality that I used for my relay workbench light that I made a while back in the sense that I want one group of LEDs to be active at one time or all of them at one time. This is a very specific need. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can throw light in a certain way. And if it doesn't work, I'll just have them active at all times and just dim it from there or something like that. Uh, so it, how it works is quite simple. The 4017 decade counter shifts its output high based on a manual clock input or a clock input. In this sense, I'm using it manually. But it shifts its outputs high in a sequential order based on a clock input. Um, so we have these four resistors right here. They are tying to the base of these two transistor packages, which is just four transistors and these four diodes up here. So how it works is you push the button and it'll shift one output high, push it again and it'll shift the other output high, I'll turn that one off and so on. When you get to the last output, which is output five, it'll send a small bit of current to these diodes up here. They're all tied out in parallel on this side. And on the other side of the diodes, which is the, I believe, cathode, on the cathode side of the diodes, they are tied to resistors over here just in parallel with the resistors. The idea behind this is to have these diodes activate all of the bases of these transistors at once without having any current seek into them uh, or into, into the path of them without them and activating the transistors by themselves in a different output mode. So this allows to turn on all outputs at once without interfering with the other outputs if that makes any sense. Hopefully I explained that well enough. Uh, so yeah, um, pretty straightforward circuit. If you didn't want this uh, control circuitry over here. All you have to do is just route it with the LEDs and you should be good. I just wanted to see if I can make it a little bit more interesting and see if I can throw the light in a fun way. So we'll take a peek at the board file that I came up with. Just switch over here and you can see that it's a bit weird. I've never routed etches on a round board before so it's a bit of a challenge. I think it was kind of fun. It turned out okay. Some of the etches make me cringe a little bit, but overall it should work. They are thick enough to handle the current and all that jazz. Uh, but before we go ahead and solder this thing, I want to point out a couple things that I noticed after I sent the board off the JLC PCB, of course. If we take a peek right here, we will notice that... Well, let's take a peek. We will notice that... I want to say the clock enable pin isn't grounded. I'm pretty sure it's not grounded. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, I think 13 is clock enable. It's not grounded. That pin has to be grounded in order to enable clock input, of course. And I also messed up the sequential order of the transistors right here. As you can see, Q3, which is pin 7, is not being used, and it should be. Uh, instead, I accidentally went and skipped it, and I'll have to address that as well. So in 
the following assembly videos I'll just add these two mods in and hopefully that's the only mods that are needed I'll just ground this pin right here which is pin 13 I'm pretty sure it's clock enable I'm not too sure what CP1 means um, on this but it is clock enable and I'll be sure to, to uh, adjust these as needed Q3 should be used but instead I went Q0, Q1, Q2, skipped Q3, Q4, and Q5. So I'll have to address that. This really isn't a big deal, but you'll notice a small delay when you're shifting the outputs, and I don't want that. I want it to kind of work smoothly. So let's go ahead and assemble this thing. But before I solder components up to it, I want to get a closer look at it and show you guys everything. This is a really good quality board from JLC PCB. Um, as you can see, we have the surface mount LEDs on this side, which is the bottom, which it'll point down like this. On this side, we have all the components that control the LEDs, as well as the power supply for the um, uh, decade counter right here and all the other fun stuff. Um, when I originally designed this, I expected to use it in a more modular sense, but now that I got it, I kind of realized that I don't need to. Uh, by what I, what I mean by that is when I designed it, I thought I'd be using a case to house everything in, but it's so small and compact, I actually don't need a case. So when I put all of this stuff into Eagle, my idea was to use wire pads to wire up the switches and everything and the power supply. So right here is the 12 volts in, the ground for the 12 volts little on off pads that turn the whole thing on and off and over here we have what's called mode which helps select what group of LEDs if not all of them you want turned on and looking at it now I probably should have just included pads for buttons and switches on this because it's really it's pretty small and it's really compact so I don't think I need to put a case on it and I don't want to put a case on it now that I see it and to explain the black solder mask my idea is that the black will help the light bounce off of it and reflect more in the direction of what you want so Let's go ahead and solder up some components on this thing and see if it works. The most time consuming part of this project was soldering all of the LEDs. You have to be really careful when soldering them. If you leave your iron on too long, you risk damaging the LED. Solder them from the sides and do so quickly. After everything was soldered, I gave it a quick test to find out that it didn't work. For some reason, the dual package transistors don't like to play well with each other. I'll explain more later, but for now, let's just go ahead and mod the board to make it work, and we'll address everything else in another schematic. This board required a lot of modifications to make it work. As you can see, I swapped out the dual package transistors with little single package ones that I had on hand, and I had to route a lot of my own etches using thin copper wire. After all the modifications were complete, the board worked just fine, so now it's time to go ahead and incorporate all these changes into a new design. 
So after getting an idea of what needed to be done for the previous board to work, I went ahead and incorporated all the mods to a new schematic file. Uh, and it's shown right here. As you can see, I went ahead and got rid of the dual package transistors. For some reason, they didn't like to play nice with each other. If one gate was activated, if one base was activated on one, another one would be slightly activated, and you can see one group of LEDs turned on at full brightness, and the other one just kind of dimmed. I didn't like that, and for some reason, when I switched out the dual packages for individual ones, it worked just fine. So I incorporated that into the schematic, and I'm using 3904. Uh, which is just two N3904 equivalent transistors and they work just fine. I went ahead and added pull down resistors to the bases. It's a value that has yet to be determined. Might not even be necessary if all works well, but I figured it might as well, you know, prove safe just to throw that in there if I need it. Uh, I also went ahead and fixed the issues with the 4017 decade counter circuit. I um, used Q3 instead of skipping over it and I grounded the clock enable, which means this will work just fine. In addition to that, I went ahead and added a tactile switch to it, so that way I didn't have to mount a tactile switch externally, which after seeing it on the first board looked kind of stupid, so I just went ahead and threw that in. I also moved the cathode position of the diodes. So when all these diodes turn on, it would go to this side of the resistor. Uh, for some reason, that proved to be like too much resistance for it to turn on the bases of the transistors, so moving the, uh, the cathode position to after the resistor proved to work just fine and all that is good and over here you can see I added resistors to the grouping of the LEDs better safe than sorry it might not even need them but I just figured I'd throw them in there I'm sure I'll get some uh, hate for not using resistors individually with the LEDs but I'm pretty sure this is just fine I've used uh, re one resistor for grouping of LEDs in the past and it worked just fine so no big deal there in addition to all this stuff I went ahead and tied the high LED, which used to be 12 volts, to a pad called PWM. Um, I picked up an external LED dimmer thing that I found on Amazon, which is right here. And for some reason, it worked awesomely. So I just went ahead and tied all the anodes of those LEDs to this PWM. That way I can dim it externally without having to add my own dimming circuit to an already crowded board, which is pretty cool. If you don't, if you don't want this, you don't have to include it, but I figured it works really awesome for me. And that should be all the changes to the schematic. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the board file. So the board got some stuff done to it. I had to accommodate for all the added components. As you can see, after the LEDs, we have the transistor. It's resistors, the diode, and all that stuff. And then uh, we have the resistors going into the LEDs right here. So I had, I had to make room for a fair bit amount of parts. For some reason, with Eagle, whenever I add a polygon and call it ground or just fill it ground, it likes to hide all the etches on that on the bottom side of the board. So if anyone has a remedy for that, which doesn't include ripping up that etch, let me know. That'd be really cool. I know in previous versions of Eagle, it worked just fine, but for some reason with this one, it doesn't like to do it. I have no idea why. Uh, so the tactile switch is right up here. It's on the same side of the board with the LEDs, which shouldn't be too bad. And we have the PWM pad right here, which again, for some reason, is hidden by the ground plane. But if I click on the PWM in etch, which ties to that via, you can see the etch running to it. So if I click right here, you can see the pad. I don't know why it's hidden, it just is. If I, if I uh, saved the file, closed Eagle, then reopened it, you'll see it just fine. It's a weird glitch for some reason. And that is all that I did to the board. It was a bit weird trying to accommodate for all those parts because I really thought I was tapped out on space, but I guess not. Uh, so let's go ahead and assemble this board now. Should work just fine. Thanks to some YouTube magic, we skipped a week and a half and we have our second edition of these boards. So let's finish this project. In order to use this LED dimmer, I have to modify it to carry the 12 volts input to my board as well as the PWM outputs to my board. I'm using an old USB cable to carry the 12 volts PWM and ground from the dimmer switch to my board. I didn't think about this, but I should have added a hole for strain relief for the board wires. Um, I'll just use a zip tie for now, but let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see if it works.
With the use of spacers and thumb screws and a little bit of epoxy, I can now mount this board to my microscope. And just like that, I have my very own working microscope ring light. It may not have been a whole lot cheaper to make, but I was able to make five of them for probably the price of two, and it was a lot of fun to design, and that's what it's really all about. Thank you so much for watching, and special thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.